So you're off to market to um, get a few bits and pieces. You've got a shopping list in your pocket. We need a two pound block of cheese, two dozen eggs, two chickens, one goose, one sheep, one pig, one cow. And because you can read, you need a book. So how many pennies are we going to need in our pocket for this? So we need one penny for that block of cheese, one penny for the two dozen eggs, and again, a penny for two chickens. Six pennies will get you the goose and 17 pennies will get you the sheep. 24 for a pig and 72 pennies for the cow. You're going to need a pound of pennies for the book. So that's 240 pennies make up a pound. And that was a pound in weight back then in the day. Um, so hopefully your 240 silver pennies have not been clipped where that's basically where somebody has taken a sliver of silver off the edge of the penny to kind of stockpile and get a little pile of silver. So that's 240 pennies for that book. I forgot to mention this is actually a very old shopping list. The shopping list dates sometime between the 12th century and the mid 14th century. So it's about 800 years old. Also, in case you're wondering why I've written that letter D next to the amount of pennies and not the letter P that we would write today, this is because that's how they wrote back in medieval England. The letter D we can thank the Romans for. It derives from their word for a coin, which is denarii. In this video, we're going to take a look at how much money you would have earned in relation to what job you may have been doing and also what your hard-earned pennies could have bought you back in the day. The only coin most people in medieval England would have seen would have been the silver penny. At this time there were gold coins, but to be honest, gold coins were not found in the uh, purse of the average worker. gold coin is a quarter noble coin. It was minted under the reign of Edward III in London sometime between 1363 and 1369. The quarter noble would be the equivalent of having 20 silver pennies in your pocket. A half noble would be the equivalent of having 40 silver pennies in your pocket. And four of these quarter nobles, a full noble, would be the equivalent of having 80 silver pennies in your pocket. So four of these would give you 80 silver pennies. The English Medieval Masons Highly skilled craftsmen who were responsible for building some of England's most famous buildings. These talented men belonged to a guild. However, a mason's guild was not linked to just one town, as the members had to move to where the building works were taking place. Many tradesmen could actually stay in one area to work, but the masons were nomadic, moving many miles between building jobs. These craftsmen were earning five to six pennies a day. The master mason was the equivalent to a modern day project manager. The master mason had overall charge on the building sites, 
In fact, everybody on that building site was under the supervision of the Master Mason. Medieval carpenters, highly skilled craftsmen and very much in demand. They were busy cutting timber to make fences, beams, windows, doors and furniture. A man had to usually join a guild as an apprentice to learn this craft on the job. They needed a knowledge in maths. Guilds could oversee their members' work and were able to impose fines on anyone in violation of the rules. The guild would also care for the members if they fell sick. They could arrange burials and take care of widows and orphans. Carpentry apprenticeships were highly valued and could last up to five to nine years. The master carpenter could earn four silver pennies in a day. An apprentice carpenter could earn two. Coopers. These are the people who are making wooden vessels and often held together with metal hoops. They're not just making barrels, they're also producing casks, buckets, butter churns, tubs, butts, troughs and tons. These products are widely used. They are used for storage devices. They're holding ale, butter, honey, mead and other dry goods. The coopers also make drinking vessels. These have been made by using small staves of oak, yew or pine. In 1298, the Coopers of Britain had set up the Worshipful Company of Coopers. It still survives today and is one of the oldest livery companies in London. A Cooper was earning three silver pennies in a day. The unskilled in medieval England, the poor people of England, worked on the land. Hard working and out in all weathers. Harvests were long days and tough work. Some of these peasants would earn less than one penny in a day. But peasants were free to work, they could travel and look for work. Unlike the serfs, these people were stuck in one place. They were tied to the lord of the manor and often the serfs would be working for no money but in return they would get food and a place that they could call home. A medieval knight. Huge income, a whopping 48 pennies in a day. The medieval knight can afford luxuries. But let's see, now you've earned your money, what exactly can you buy with it? Knight could treat himself to many luxuries in life. At 48 pennies a day, money's not a problem. In the early 14th century, a linen shirt worn under your clothes would cost 12 pennies. A gallon of good wine in 1331 was 8 pennies. You could spend less than eight pennies for a gallon of wine, but if you don't care too much what it tastes like. Ale and beer was also priced by the gallon, and it was about one to one and a half pennies for a gallon of ale. Trying to set up a business of your own, you would need tools. You would need deep pockets and a good saving in place to buy your own tools. In about 1450, a spinning wheel would cost you 10 pennies. A blacksmith's anvil would cost you 240 silver pennies, so that's a pound to buy an anvil. If you want a decent set of bellows to go with this anvil to, as your startup kit, you're going to have to add another 360 silver pennies. A basic hammer is going to set you back eight pennies. Or, for the eight pennies, you could buy yourself two chisels. A spade would cost more than a day's wage for the majority of men. Three silver pennies you would need to buy a spade in 1450. Often a stock of weapons would be kept at the parish church. 
these could be used for the men who were called up to have a fight. Many rural Norfolk churches had an area designated for practice. This practice area was called the Camping Lands. The Camping Lands was an area for the boys and men of the parish to practice their longbow skills. An English medieval army was centred around the longbow. If you wanted to buy a longbow of your own, that would cost you about one shilling or 12 silver pennies, depending on the quality of the bow. A cheap sword, you're going to have to part with six pennies back in 1340. You would also need arrows. The Fletcher would be producing these arrows and that would set you back for 24 arrows, 12 silver pennies. <laughs>